Hello Legends. In this video, I'm going to be going over the new NAN model selector. The model selector lets us add up to 10 different LLMs and then attach them into our AI agent so that we can dynamically switch between LLMs when we're completing different tasks. Now, in order to access the model selector, make sure that you update your NAN instance to the latest version. So that's 100.1. And in case you didn't know, you can go ahead to the releases page in the NAN GitHub repository. And this is where you can view all the stuff that the NAN devs are working on in the back end. So every time there's a new release, so for example, the pre-release of version 101, you can see all the different bug fixes that NAN is working on, as well as the new features that they're adding to the NAN instance. And for this video, we're going to be looking at the 100.1 latest version, but the original version 100 is just over here. So we can see the bug fixes that NAN has worked on. And then going down to this features section, this is where we have the add model selector node. So that's the actual feature we're going to be exploring in this video today. Now to get that model selector, the first thing we need to do is just add an AI agent onto our canvas. Once we have the AI agent added, we can just click on this plus where it says chat model. And now we have the ability of adding that model selector. So instead of previously just choosing the model directly into this node over here, we have the model selector, and then we can add our LLMs into this model selector. So if I click into the configuration, the first thing that I can adjust here is the number of inputs, and that's between two and 10 LLMs. So coming back onto the canvas, now I can go through here and just add all of my favorite LLMs. So I've got Anthropic, let's say I wanna add OpenAI, which is down the very bottom. And then I can add another one over here. Let's say I add uh, Google Gemini. So you can go through and actually add up to 10 LLMs. And then in order for you to be able to route between choosing different LLMs, you do that from this configuration panel as well. And you can do that by adding rules. So if I click on add new rule over here, I have, okay, if I wanna actually use model one, I need these conditions to be met. So you're probably already familiar with the logic expressions in NAN you have to have some kind of initial value to equal to something else. So let's say over here, I have a variable called route. And then if I wanna choose model one, I'll have to have some kind of external way to select route to equal to one. So whenever route equals to one, then I will use model one. I can add another rule, and now I can decide when I choose model two. So if I wanna choose model two over here, then I will have that route. And if route equals two, it's gonna use model two. So this is a very basic way that you can configure um, how and when you select different models. So then that way, when you're actually interacting with your AI agent, as long as you set the value of the variable routes over here, before you go into your AI agent, then you can access that variable in your model selector and then dynamically choose between these different LLMs. So while we're here, I wanna speak about the actual efficacy of using this model selector. So you can see over here, I've actually got three different uh, providers altogether. So I've got Anthropic, I've got OpenAI, and then I've got Google as our LLM providers. Now, as you might know, or you might not know, um, when you're in your AI agent, the main configuration that's gonna get the most juice out of the LLM that you use is this system message. This is the prompt that you're using for your AI. Now, as a rule of thumb, it's actually important for you to structure your system message, so your prompt, depending on which LLM you wanna use. So the main thing that we have over here is that we can only have one system message from our AI agent, and that has to somehow cater to all the different features and benefits of these different uh, LLMs that we're using. For example, if we use OpenAI, and I go onto the GPT 4.1 that has the uh, 1 million token uh, context, the style and the structure of this prompt will be different to the style and structure of the prompt that I might use for something like Claude Sonnet 4 which would be different to the style and structure of the prompt that I would use for Google Gemini. So really, it wouldn't be my preference to use this model selector if I'm using different providers of LLMs. What I might rather do is actually just use different models of the same provider. So let's say I just get rid of this Anthropic right now, and then I just duplicate this chat model. And all I'm using now is just OpenAI. So I'm gonna plug this into here, plug this into here, and then I'm just changing the model. So I've got GPT 4.1 as my primary. Then I might use one of the different 4.1 family models, like the 4.1 mini. And then over here, I would just choose the 4.1 nano. So here we go. So this would be my preference. So we're using OpenAI for all of our models in this model selector, which means that at the high level, when we're setting our system message, it's gonna work for the OpenAI model. But on top of that, I'm not actually using something like GPT 4.0 here, and then using 4.1, and then using something like 0.3 for reasoning. 
because the prompt for my reasoning model is still gonna be different. So really, I'm just using the 4.1 family of models. I got 4.1, 4.1 mini, and then 4.1 nano. So this would be my recommendation for the best way of actually setting up this model selector to be most effective with your AI agent. And now if you ask me, okay, Bar, but what if I actually wanna have the same agent but actually use different models? then all I would do is just duplicate the agent and I would have one for OpenAI like what I have here, a model selected to choose between the 4.1 family. And then over here, I might have the exact same agent and instead of using OpenAI, I would use Anthropic and then another agent for a different provider altogether. And that means in your workflow, you're actually routing between agents that have a specialized system prompt that actually works and extracts the most value of the different provider of LLM. Okay, so with that recommendation out of the way, I now wanna look at three different ways that you can actually route between different models. So I'm gonna go against the recommendation that I just made, mainly because I just want it to be very easy for us to differentiate between different models. And I've got three different examples over here. The first example is dynamic task routing. So we're gonna be routing based on the task to be performed. Now to set this up, I'm just gonna get a chat note onto the screen. So let's go chat trigger, there we go. Let's bring it over here and connect it up. Now what I'm doing is I have this initial basic LLM chain that I'm using to help route my requests. Now, the purpose of this is just to identify what my original incoming request is. For example, if the request is to generate a text, output the number one, and if the request is to summarize a text, output number two. So this basic LLM chain is just acting like a bit of a route selector. So I input my chat message, it goes through this basic LLM chain. There's no response generated for us for the front end for the user. All we're doing here is just we're deciding, okay, if we wanna generate a text, we're gonna be using Anthropic. If we need to summarize a text, we're gonna be using OpenAI. Now over here in the AI agent configuration, all we're doing is we're sending in the chat input. So that's what we have over here, request equals chat input. Then I've got a very basic system message. There's actually no value in the system message at all. All it says is your helpful content agent. You help summarize large bodies of text concisely in two to three sentences, or you also help generate copy off of very simple instructions your target audience is camping and outdoor. And then if we dig into the model selector, we can still access the different nodes on the canvas. So for example, the basic LLM chain is what I'm feeding into my conditions when I'm choosing between model one or I'm choosing between model two. So let me just execute this to show you how this works. All right, I'm just gonna say, please summarize this text. And then I have about 500 characters of a short story. So let's click on send. Awesome, and our workflow executed successfully. So we first went through the basic LLM chain and we can see that based on our system instructions, if we want to summarize a text, please output the number two. And that's what I asked over here. Please summarize this text. And then I gave 500 characters. So the output we have is two. Now, if we dig into the model selector, this is where we actually dynamically see that we chose the OpenAI model. So if I click onto mapping over here, we can see that we had the input of the basic LLM chain and the output was route two. And then for my condition, I have this basic LLM chain. So I've just dragged this into this field over here. And then I said, if it's set to number one, we're using model one, where model one is Anthropic. And then over here, model two is OpenAI. So back in the configuration, just scrolling down. And this is where we have model two, so OpenAI. Now, if that basic LLM chain is equal to two, which it was, we just go into mapping then we're using the OpenAI model. And that's why we see that it was highlighted over here. And then here's the output of that agent. So we use the OpenAI model, and then we have about a one or two sentence summary of that 500 characters. So that's example one. To recap, we used a basic LLM chain to understand what the inbound query was about. We then passed the original request into the AI agent. We access the routing from the basic LLM chain as part of our logic to decide between using model one or model two. We dynamically use model two, then we had the output back to the user. Now the second example we're gonna be looking at is cost efficiency routing. So all I'm doing here is just looking at, okay, is the request below or above 500 characters? And then depending on that, we're then gonna be choosing our model dynamically. So for anything that's below 500 characters, we're gonna be generating our AI response using the anthropic model. Anything that's above 500 characters, I might wanna save some cost, and then I'm gonna be using the open AI model. Okay, so let me just quickly set this up. I'm gonna move this across. Let's unplug and then replug the chat model over here. Now to look inside the code node, this is very basic. All I'm doing is just checking the chat input. I'm checking if it's below or above 500 characters. If it's below, I output number one. If it's above, I output number two. All right, let's use the exact same message that we had before. So please summarize this. And then I have that input text. Now I'm just gonna hit send and awesome, there we are. 
So let's dig into this code node and inspect what happened. So we've just input the chat input over here and now looking at the output, the object that we're creating is just the session ID action and chat input. That's just what we input from the chat node and we're passing it through just to kind of keep everything consistent. But the main thing we want to look at is the model choice. So this code actually identified that the text was below 500 characters and therefore it output number one. Digging into our model selector, we can go across to this mapping tab over here, scrolling down to the bottom, we have access to model choice. And all we've done is we've defined model one, we've got this item.json.model choice. I've just literally dragged this into this variable section over here. And then I've set if the number equals to one, we're gonna use model one. And if the number equals to two, we're gonna be using model two. So we can see because we had below 500 characters, we output model one and then we used Anthropic and then we had our response with the AI agent. Okay, so that was looking at the cost efficiency routing, just looking at how many tokens we're gonna to be inputting into our AI model. Now, the final one that I wanna look at is actually routing based on an external workflow. So over here, we're gonna be routing based on a third party integration. So we're gonna be sending a bunch of data into this webhook and part of that data is actually gonna contain the route that we're gonna be then plugging into this model selector over here. So to help us with that process, all I've done over here is create an API call that's gonna be landing in that NAN webhook. I've just configured it to point towards that NAN webhook. And then the actual JSON body that we're sending contains two variables. So the first is this message variable. And this message variable contains that same text that we import in the chat interface before. And then we have this route over here and we're setting route to equal to two. This route is what we're gonna be using when we're dynamically selecting our model. All right, let me hit execute workflow. And now this webhook is open to receiving events. Let me just fire it off from here. I'm gonna go node webhook. And now we've just hit into that NAN workflow. And then we have our response over here, which is the summary. So then the output is this summarized text over here. So we gave it in about 500 characters and we got back just a single sentence. So let's take a look at the NAN canvas. So the first thing we're looking at is this webhook. So this is just the package of information that we got from that API call. We have the message, which is that 500 characters, and then we have the route, which equals to two. Now digging into the model selector, and then going across to this mapping section over here, let's just bring us back into the information that was received from the webhook. Scrolling down to the bottom, we can see that we have route two over here. So now in order for us to select our models, we have model one, we have this webhook.item.json query route. So I've literally just dragged this into this placeholder over here. And then I've said if it equals to one, we're using model one. But in our case, it actually equals to two, which means we used model two. Now going back onto the canvas, that's over here, the OpenAI model. And then finally, in order for us to respond to this initial webhook, I've just got a respond to webhook node. And if I go into here, this is the output that we received in cursor, which is that single sentence summary. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Now, just quickly, like I said before, uh, if you are gonna be using this model selector, my recommendation would be uh, twofold. So the first is, just use one provider. Don't switch between Anthropic, OpenAI, Google Gemini, and everything else because your system message is the most important part when you're actually trying to get the most juice out of your AI models. And then the second thing is just use the same family of models. So in the example that I said before, if you're gonna be using OpenAI, just use the 4.1, 4.1 mini, and then the 4.1 nano. That way the prompt that you set is actually perfect for those 4.1 family of models. And then all you're doing is choosing between level of intelligence and then speed as well. All right, guys, I hope you have a lot of fun with your new model selectors for your AI agents. See you in the next video.